What's up, everybody? It is Mark from Ichiban Games, and we are back again for the eighth installment of the card set for Alchemazam, which is the set, the Grand Arcanum. Once again, please subscribe and hit that notification bell for being able to hear more videos that are coming up that we make, and just more games to make in general. Now, let's get into the card set. But remember, we need that disclaimer. First things first, this video is made for teaching purposes only and in the future will be updated. The game is in the alpha stage. All the cards you'll see are proxy and used as placeholder. This is for teaching purposes only. All the art that you're going to see, some I own and some I do not. But once again, it's for teaching purposes only and placeholder. So... All that credit, though, does go to the artists. Let's do it. The first card to go over is Sandstorm Thief, which is a common card that is a creature elf thief of the Earth faction. It has an attack of 2, defense of 2, and special defense of 0. It has a casting cost of use 1 gold and 1 glyph, and can only or must be summoned by these ingredients. So you can't use any kind of treasure trove or anything else to do that. Steel Limit 1. Ability. When this card enters the field, choose a target player and steal one gold or glyph from them. Ability. If this card damages an opponent, steal one gold or glyph from them. Magic Ability. Instant Speed. Turn an Arcane Tome to banish this card off the field, then instantly bring it back onto the field. Alright, so if anybody is doing a little strategy of Steely McSteely Pants here, this is definitely a thing. So when it comes onto the field, it is going to just steal something. And if it hits, it's going to steal something, but it only has one limit, so... There is that. However, that's pretty wild that if you go and you have this thing shoot off the field and then it comes back on the field, it will steal something again. So it has evasion. That's great. And also it will steal. So what a dirty, effective card that is. Next, we have Savage Hunger, which is a common card that is an instant. You spend one Glyph and use one Arcane Tome. Until the end of turn, target creature gets plus two attack and defense, as well as drain and is in the Vampire Faction. If it is already in the Vampire Faction, it also gains targeting. If it damages a player, banish a card from their hand. All right, so this is a really good card where if it's already a vampire, you can use targeting. If it's just a creature in general or if it's a vampire, it's still going to go and gain that buff. But also, it's an instant, so say something's attacking and you can use this, it's fantastic. But if you're going to go and smash a player in the face with this you can take a card from them and banish it not just put it in their graveyard so yeah this is quite a good card next we have scheming weaponizer which is an uncommon card that is a creature gremlin mechanizer which has an attack of two defense of two and special defense of zero it has a casting cost of use two glyphs and one card from your hand. It is going to do the following. When this card enters the field, you may look at the top four cards of your deck. Keep an item card on top, then shuffle the rest. Ability, spell speed. If this card is in your hand, once per turn, reveal this card, then create one scrap. Ability, spell speed. Turn and sacrifice X scrap to make a target item you control a creature that is a construct with X plus one attack and plus one defense counters on it. Cannot do this to an already animated item. Oh 
Okay, so what this thing is going to do, it is going to take your items and turn them into creatures, and it will take all that scrap, and that is what is going to put the plus one attack and defense counters all over those items. So this is pretty good, and you just show this thing once out of your hand on your turn, and that's how you can get a scrap, or you just turn it, it'll make a scrap, and that's pretty good. So yeah that is wonderful next up we have scholar's quill which is a common card that is an item and a feather it has a casting cost of two cards in your hand all right so what's this do it can't be used on the same turn it entered the field and alchemic ability instant speed turn this card then unturn a gold or glyph on your field well, that's quite nice. You can go and cast some things quicker by doing so. And yeah, that is a nice little card right there. Next, we have Scimitar Boomerang, which is an equipment weapon sword of iron. It is a common card, and it has a casting cost of spend two gold. It gives you a plus one attack and an equip cost of one. Physical Link Ability. On your turn, when two scimitar boomerangs are equipped to the same creature, at the beginning of combat, you may link them. If that creature is attacking, it gets targeting and preemptive, which it unequips the linked scimitar boomerang to throw them at a target creature for 5 damage. After preemptive damage occurs, the scimitar boomerangs trigger and return to the creature, which they re-equip to the creature as long as that creature is still active okay so this thing basically if you have two of them it is nice because not only is it just two extra attack on something but when you attack you can throw it at a creature and that's got preemptive so that's nice the thing to note about this though is when it is thrown it has a trigger where it's supposed to come back but something if they have an instant could shoot a fireball or whatever at that creature where it's unequipped and could kill that thing and if that's the case it would be out on the field but this would normally shoot back it's a nice little card here but you definitely want two of them that's for sure Next, we have Scourge of the Abyss, which is a common card that is a creature, fish, merman, warrior of the water faction, and it has an attack of three, defense of three, and special defense of zero. It has a casting cost of use two gold and one treasure trove, and it does the following. Empowered by hiding. When this card hides, it gets a power counter. Hide ability. When this card emerges, create one pearl. Ability, instant speed. Before combat damage, spend two power counters to give plus two attack to this card when it emerges. All right, so this is good, man. This is, this you're just going to go and smash some players and create some pearls. That is great. This thing hides and it can buff itself up. So yeah, that's a really good card for sure. Next, we have Scroll Shred, which is a common card that is a spell, and its casting cost is 4 life points. Target opponent reveals their hand. Select one card from it and send it to the graveyard. Well, if you don't mind taking that damage, you can go and throw some cards away in their hand. That's quite good, and you can see what they got, too. So, yeah, this is a, this is a good card for sure. Next, we have Scythe Legged Centipede, which is a common card that is a creature bug centipede with an attack of one, defense of one, and special defense of zero. And it is a casting cost of using one gold. So, this thing does the following Physical ability. If a creature steals from you, this card deals damage to that creature equal to its defense. As long as this card is attacking, it gets plus one attack. It deals two extra damage to any human, dwarf, gnome, 
fairy, elf, goblin, merman, plant, gremlin, or homunculus it damages. Ability, instant speed. Discard one card to give sight like centipede plus one defense for that turn. Cannot be countered. Okay, this little bug here is quite effective and this is really good against things that steal so and it can hurt it really good too so that's wonderful and it definitely does more damage to any kind of human dwarf etc that's in there that's cool so and when it attacks it technically is a two attack so yeah it can be quite the nice little bug here that we have next we have second life which is a spell that is a common and has a casting cost of two life points select a target creature from your graveyard with a base attack of three defense of three and or special defense of three or under and put it on top of your deck so that works that's a quite little effective card for just getting back some smaller creatures, but we all know smaller ones can become bigger ones. So next we have an uncommon card called Sentinel Tree, which is a creature plant tree that is an attack of zero, defense of seven, and special defense of zero. It is three gold to use to cast, and it has Sentinel. And the ability when this card is on your field during an opponent's attack phase of combat you may choose an opponent attacking creature to target attack this card regardless if they are empowered or not all right so this ability is quite cool so what happens here is this gets to go off before anything of declaring any kind of targeting for an opponent you get to go and choose who you want to go and have attack this thing first is how this works. So it is definitely a strong card where you have it be a seven defense. So any of their big creatures or it doesn't matter if they're hiding or empowered or whatever, this thing is going to say, hey, you are going to have this card attack this tree right here and that's what's going to end up happening. So, yeah, this is a wonderful card to evade getting hit. Next up, we have Century of the Deep, which is an uncommon card that is a creature, merman, cephalopod, squid warrior of the water faction. It has an attack of six and a defense of three and special defense of zero. Its casting cost is use three gold, and then it has barrier, Target, up to two non-empowered creatures. Damage may be distributed among those targets. Physical ability, spell speed. Use one arcane tome to stun a target creature until the rest of that turn. So, Mr. Inky here can go and stun things, and you can go and target stuff for however much you would like to go and target for at two different things. And it's got barrier, so... That's wonderful. This thing's going to be a block. So, but yeah, great card here. Next up, we have the card Seraphim of Conquest. It is a rare card that is a creature angel warrior of the light faction. It has an attack of three, defense of four, and special defense of zero. It has a casting cost of use three gold and three glyphs plus two cards from your hand. Or you use one treasure trove and one arcane tome plus two cards from your hand. So what does this thing do? It has spell proof and empowered by flying and magic. When this card enters the field, a target opponent loses one life point per gold or glyph and two life points per her treasure trove and arcane tome on their field unless they choose to discard them to their piles. You gain life equal to all life points lost this way. Oh boy. So yeah, when this thing comes in, you get life points 
per every treasure trove, arcane tome, glyph, and gold that is on your opponent's field unless they're willing to get rid of it and they get hurt by it. So anybody who is looking to stock up on golden glyphs, this is a nice little punishment for you. But anyway, that's a crazy card right there. And it has spell proof and it has flying and magical. So yeah, that, that's great. Next we have Shadow Creeper, which is a common card that is a creature undead shade of the Dark Faction. And it is one attack, two defense, and zero special defense. It has a casting cost of using two glyphs. It is empowered by hidden. This creature enters the field hidden. When this card hides, it gets one power counter on it. Magic ability, spend three power counters to hide another creature. So this is a nice card that can enable creatures to hide. And that's quite nice. It can go and also come in hidden. So that's helpful for a nice little chance to go and hit your opponent. The next card we have is Shield of the Sun, which is a common card. It is an equipment shield with the Alchemic Faction and Light Faction. So, it has a casting cost of Spend 1 Glyph and an equip cost of 2. It has no attack that it gives, but it does give you a defense of 3 and a special defense of 1 for the equipped creature. Alchemic ability, instant speed. When a creature equipped with this card is dealt combat damage or is the target of a spell or ability, you gain three life. Alchemic ability, instant speed. When equipped prior to the damage step of combat, for every five life points over your starting total, Sun Shield does one point of damage to any one fixture on the field. Holy moly. Okay, so this thing, you will be able to get life points out of this. And that's even if you go and have something target the creature that is equipped with this shield. And the fact that it goes and does damage before damage happens for every five life points that you have over your life total, this is going to be quite crazy of how that can work and that is anything on the field the next card we have is shining spirit which is a common card that is a creature undead spirit of the light faction it is a attack of two defense of two and special defense of zero and the casting cost is use one arcane tome empowered by magic on any player's turn, if you lost four or more life points while Shining Spirit is on your field, create one diamond at the second upkeep step. Magic ability, instant speed. Spend three gold, redirect one source of non-combat damage to any player. So, this can go and have the effect of basically redirect but for spells is how that kind of works so that is quite nice and when you go and get hurt by four it doesn't matter which player's turn it is you can go and get diamonds so diamonds as you remember heal you a little bit so that's pretty cool well not a shabby card for sure and it can go and just whack a player straight through next we have shrieking banshee which is an uncommon card that is a creature undead spirit that is three attack and three defense with zero special defense it is a casting cost of use for gold and one glyph it's empowered by flight and it has a magic ability that is spell speed of Turn this card and spend two glyphs to search your deck for a creature and reveal it. Put that card on the top of your deck, then put a negative one attack and negative one defense counter on a target creature. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome. You can search for cards. This thing flies. It's strong. 
and you can go and make things minus. So, yeah, that's really good. The next card is Shroud of Wizardry, which is a common card that is an equipment, armor, cloth, magical, which is a casting cost of spend one gold and use one treasure trove. It has an equip cost of one. And it does add a special defense of four to the equipped creature. When equipped, whenever you cast a spell, instant, or magic ability, you may draw a card. The equipped creature is also a wizard. So yeah, this card is quite nice. You can go and equip it to a creature. It gets that wizard association of the wizard faction. And it definitely will let you draw some cards once you start doing some magic stuff. So... Yeah, that's really, really cool. Next, we have Sifting Scavenger, which is a common card that is a creature beast rat that is an attack of one, defense of two, and special defense of zero, with a casting cost of use two glyphs. Ability, spell speed. Turn this card to sacrifice a relic or equipment on your field or banish a card in your graveyard. When you do, draw a card. Well, that's nice. You can definitely get more cards for that, too. So, shove some cards in your graveyard and then just draw more cards. So, yeah, what a good card that is, too. The next card we have is a common card called Skeleton Warrior, which is a creature undead human skeleton warrior with a attack of 2, defense of 2, and special defense of 0, and its casting cost is use 2 gold. If Skeleton Warrior has an equipment equipped, it gains an extra plus one attack and plus one defense on top of what it gets from the equipment's benefits. So, this thing, if you slap some equipment on it, it is just going to be a little bit stronger. That's quite great right there. The next card is an uncommon card called Slay the Dead, which is a spell, and it has a casting cost of spend two gold. Destroy up to three target undead creatures. Alrighty, so you want to kill some liches, you want to kill some other stuff. Well, this is going to kill up to three of them pretty quickly. So this is a nice card that is just going to knock all those undead players into another world. Next we have Sleep, which is a common card that is an instant. It has a casting cost of spend one glyph. Target creature cannot attack, block, or perform any actions for the rest of the turn. Well, that's quite nice. So as long as nobody goes and heals the creature from doing so, this thing is going to keep them from doing some stuff. So this is a great card, especially for a one-drop right here. Next, we have Smash, which is a common card that is a spell. And it is any two gold or two glyphs that you can spend and one card in your hand as well. So, destroy one target equipment, item, or field object. So, yeah, this is what is going to destroy some equipments and items and other things. This is a good card to have, that's for sure, because smashing stuff is really helpful. Next, we have Smoke Bomb, which is an uncommon instant card of the fire faction, and it has a casting cost of spend one glyph. If a creature is blocking or is targeted of any opponent magic or ability, give it the hidden empowerment. Until the end of turn, if this creature emerges, it gets plus one attack and preemptive. And if you choose a fire faction creature, it gets an extra plus one attack. And any hide emerge abilities trigger again. Well, that is cool. So, if you have some stuff that's fire, and it does some hiding or emerging trigger abilities, it's going to do it again. And also, just in general, this thing can evade, you know, some nasty little spells that would be put upon it. So, definitely a good card for evasion here. 
The next card we have is Smoke Minion, which is a common card that is a creature undead spirit knight that is a attack of two, defense of one, and special defense of zero. And the casting cost is used to gold. It's empowered by magic, and its magic ability, when Smoke Minion attacks, you may spend two gold or two glyphs to banish a target card from an opponent graveyard. Well, that's quite nice. You can get rid of some nasty recursion out of somebody's graveyard with this card. That is awesome. And it's magically empowered. The next card we have is Snake Oil Elixir, which is a rare card that is an item potion. It has a casting cost of either discard two cards in your hand or sacrifice two creatures on your field. Alchemic ability, instant speed. Turn this card to gain two life points, cure two units of poison on yourself, or cure a target creature that is ailed by stun or stone. Alchemic ability, spell speed. Turn this card and sacrifice it, then draw two cards. You cannot do this ability when the card enters the field. So, we have... This card, which can get you some cards, and it can cure stuff and heal you. This is a nice card here. Next up is a rare card called Snipe. It is a creature bird beast, and it has an attack of star with a defense of one and special defense of zero. It is a casting cost of use either four gold or four glyphs. It's empowered by flight. The snipe's attack power is equal to the number of snipes you control and ability instant speed spend three gold or three glyphs to create a snipe. Oh, that is juicy. You can have these little crazy things come out on the field and they can fly and they just get stronger for each one that comes out on the field. Oh, that is great. So yeah, definitely, definitely this card is wild. The next card we have is Soot Wallower, which is an uncommon card. It is a creature cephalopod nautilus fire creature with an attack of one, defense of one, and special defense of zero, and its casting cost is use one glyph. It has pierce, it can block magic empowered creatures, ability at instant speed, spend two glyphs to gain poison one unit, link ability, link with any creature as an equipment weapon. It is still considered attacking when equipped, unlinks at your first upkeep. Oh, that is fantastic. So you can use this thing to become a piercing creature. And if you want, you could go and give it poison and it can block magical empowered creatures. So this is really good, really good. And yeah, so when you go and you link to it, you don't have to attack and that will make it go and block those empowered magic creatures to come through because it will stay on until the end of when it comes to your next turn. The next card is Sorcerer's Backlash, which is an uncommon card that is an enchantment magic, which is a casting cost of spend five gold, attach this card to your field, magic ability, instant speed, if an opponent's creature does damage to you, this card deals five magic damage to the creature that damaged you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there we go. You want to go and hit me? There's going to be some countermeasures going on. It's going to hit you back. Great card right here. The next card we have here is Soul Recombinator, which is a rare card. It is a creature vampire alchemist warrior of the Light Faction. It has an attack of 4, defense of 3, and special defense of 0. Its casting cost is use 1 gold and 1 arcane tome. 
It has targeting. If this card kills a creature, create plus one defense counters called SR counters equal to the killed creature's defense and put them on any creatures without SR counters. When creatures with SR counters take damage, remove the SR counters first. Alchemic ability, spell speed. Sacrifice two creatures to put this card from your graveyard to your hand. Well, ain't that nifty. So, you can go and target something and kill it, and when you do, you can put those SR counters, which are basically defense counters that minus off a creature first, and if this thing dies, you can just go and sacrifice two creatures and, you know, put this back in your hand anyway. So, this is a great card Wonderful Graveyard Recursion, and Great Vampire Card. Next, we have Soul Spire, which is a land enchantment, Citadel Magic, Dark Faction, and it is a common card. It is two gold spent and one arcane tome used. Attach this card to your field. Wizards, Witches, Necromancers, Healers, Elementalists, Shaman, and Magical Faction creatures can only visit Soulspire. At your second upkeep, Soulspire gets two power counters for each visiting creature. Magic Ability, Instant Speed, Dark. Spend X number of power counters to do X damage divided among any targets. Magic Ability, Spell Speed, Dark. Sacrifice one creature on your field for one creature in your graveyard to your hand. Alright, so this is a nice card for just having creatures visit it. So, lands are wonderful. This thing will go and just hurt stuff and you can go and get creatures back to your hand. So, more Graveyard Recursion. And a nice little building here. And it works only for those tagged kind of creatures. So, just remember that. Alright. Next, we have Soul Swap, which is an instant card that is rare. If you spend one gold and two glyphs and use one treasure trove, you can cast it. Sacrifice a creature on your field for a creature in your graveyard. The creature from your graveyard comes on the field unturned and may fight an opponent creature. Well, that's nice. You could go and cast that out, get some big burly kind of creature out, and it can go and attack and kill something. And who knows what other shenanigans will happen, but it'll be out there, and that's great. And this is an instant. So that is quite lovely there. Next, we have Spear of the Wind, which is a rare card. It's an equipment, weapon, spear, iron, magical, and of the air faction. It costs three glyphs spent and an equip cost of two. And it gives plus two attack and plus two defense and zero special defense to the equipped creature. It has pierce and the equipped creature gets the empowerment of flight. Oh, nice. So you get to go and strap this on something and make it fly. And it's going to go and do some world of hurt. So, yeah. And you're going to pierce through things, too. So that's quite wonderful. Next is Spellbane, which is a common card. And it is an instant. It costs three glyphs spent. And it does the following. You, as well as creatures, have spellproof for the rest of the turn. Field spells and abilities don't affect any fixtures you have except curse counters on you or creatures. Oh boy. So if you didn't notice, the field spells are not going to happen if somebody tries to go and make this happen. That is wild. And plus you get to go and have spell proof as well as creatures you have for the rest of the turn. So yeah that is great. That is nuts. 
The next card we have is Spender Splendor, which is a rare card that is an enchantment blessing that is of the alchemic faction. And it has a spending of two gold and two glyphs to cast. Attach Spender Splendor to your tableau. When you spend or sacrifice conventional or upgraded resources, use them instead. When you use, spend, or sacrifice any two gold and or treasure troves, take a gold from the supply. If it was any two glyphs or two arcane tomes, take a glyph from the supply. Resources come in turned. Okay. This is where you're going to get all your generation for some goodies. And the fact that you can sacrifice it or you can spend it and your stuff doesn't go away that's awesome it might happen when you cast the spell immediately that stuff will go away but everything after this thing is on the field you are good to go so this card is just ridiculous and awesome Next, we have Spreadshot Ranger, which is a creature elf warrior archer that is an uncommon card. It is an attack of 5, defense of 2, and special defense of 0. Its casting cost is you use 2 gold and 1 treasure trove. It has preemptive when targeting. Target up to 5 creatures and can distribute the damage to each creature can attack and block flying empowered creatures. So this thing is going to shoot stuff all over the place and just like it says, spread shot everything and it's preemptive. So yeah, definitely a crazy menace is what this thing is. The next card is Staff of Power, which is a common card. It is an equipment relic weapon that's a staff made of iron that's magical and of the Earth faction. It is a casting cost of spending one gold and one glyph and an equip cost of two. The equipped creature gets plus one attack and its magic ability at instant speed is... When equipped, spend two glyphs to give a creature plus four attack or plus four defense for the rest of that turn. So you want to make some cards, some beefy boys? Well, this is the card to do it. This is a great card and you can do it at instant speed. So there you go. Next is Star Maiden, which is an ultra rare card that is a creature human entity that has an attack of three, defense of three, and special defense of zero. It is a casting cost of use two glyphs and one treasure trove. When you draw a card, this card gets a power counter. Morph, spell speed, spend five power... Mo one, two, three... Morph, spell speed, spend five power counters to morph this card into a Comet Dancer token or Architect of the Sun token. All right, so this is a really good card. You will see what the Comet Dancer and Architect of the Sun will be coming up in more video. The next card is Stone Golem, which is an uncommon card that is a creature construct elemental that's a golem of the Earth faction. It has an attack of four, defense of four, and special defense of zero. Its casting cost is use five gold. This card can be summoned by sacrificing one gold and one glyph instead of using resources normally in its summoning cost. So basically, you can have this card come out for just sacrificing a gold or a glyph. And that's a 4-4 four, four as a 2-drop. So that's pretty wild. Next is Stonesmith, which is a creature dwarf monk of the Earth faction. It has an attack of 3 and defense of 2, special defense 0. And it has a casting cost of use 2 glyphs. Ability, instant speed. Use a boulder as a shield. Throw ability, spell speed. Turn this card and spend two gold to throw a boulder or throwable object at any target. Throw damage equals two. Hit damage equals two. Magic ability, instant speed. Turn this card and spend one gold to create one boulder at zero attack, three defense, zero special defense. 
So this card's going to make some boulders. You're going to be able to throw them, and you can also use them as shields. So that is quite wonderful. The final card we're going over in this video is Strangleweed. It is a rare card that is a creature plant vine weed that has zero attack, two defense, and zero special defense. It is a casting cost of use two glyphs. When Strangleweed is dealt damage, draw a card. Physical ability, instant speed. Turn this card to stun and turn a target opponent creature until the end of turn. So this card is going to go and nail some things down. And if you use it for some defense, you are going to get some cards out of it for every time it gets hurt. That's all the cards for this video. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. And click that notification bell so you can hear about all the good videos that we have coming up with more videos coming for this set soon. And remember, game rules and card database are on the Google Drive. You can play the game on untap.in and Tabletop Simulator. Remember, untap.in is free to sign up and join that Discord. That's what you're going to want to do the most is join that Discord to meet others who will play with you. They'll play this game and other games, and you can find other stuff on the webpage of Ichiban Games. Once again, this is Mark from Ichiban Games. Thank you, and see you next video.